VOM Business Network. So much for one broadcast. Hello everyone, it's another very beautiful day to you and thank you very much for taking time to join us on yet another package of the EOM Business Network. Oh yes, the voice of corporate Nigeria. I am Olorogo Elkana Mawari. Today on the program, as always, our focus is a look at the Nigerian economy as we will be interfacing with select industry operators about their businesses, the operating environment, and other related issues. Also on the lineup is Let's Talk, and our focus is on Black Scale Limited and IAF Sawi Limited. On Spot On, we shall continue our conversation with a quintessential gentleman, experienced business development and analytics manager, certified fraud examiner, vision driven entrepreneurial expert, and industry captain, Oladi Meji Peters, who is the managing director. Director and Chief Executive Officer of First Central Credit Bureau Limited, the first licensed, truly independent ISO certified credit intelligence firm in Nigeria, and indeed one of the most distinguished CEOs to look up to in 2024. And on the face to face, as a highly experienced automobile project manager, corporate strategist, goal getting entrepreneur, and industry captain, Shola Adigun, who is the managing director of Kaloha Nigeria Limited one of the fastest growing, tested and trusted automobile marketing firms in the world and indeed one of the most distinguished CEOs to look up to in 2024. It's a package you must see. Sit back as we bring you the details. Shola Okbaleye is the founder and group chief executive officer of City Sports Group Limited, one of the fastest growing diversified group of companies in Nigeria and indeed one of the most distinguished CEOs to look up to in 2024. Um, City Sports, it's a um, provider of sports development services, but we also like to call ourselves a total and a multi-sports development company, right? Uh, we've talked about the multi-part because we are in about five sports. We, are, we have about five sports programs, right? But the total part is talking about the end-to-end -end of sports development, and that comes from, from facilities, first of all. You know, if we don't have good facilities, there's no way people will develop in sports. So we have something, a department in our organization that helps to create, to build and manage sports facilities across town. Um, if you do not have good coaches, you will not be able to develop. So we have another department that also looks into train the trainer activities. So we train coaches, community coaches, sometimes our own coaches. We are partners with organizations outside of the country that provide curriculum for us to be able to train our coaches. Um, also with uniforms and equipment. If you don't have those equipment, balls and shoes and, and jerseys, the right jerseys and all that, you cannot develop. So we also have a department that focuses on um, sports equipment and sports um, clothing and all of that. There's the app. So technology today, we all know that sports tech is a new thing, but we all know generally that without technology, you can you can hardly do very many things in today's world. So we have an app, it's called the City Sports app, is um, created by a company called Capacity. Um, the objective of that is to provide technology as an enabler to help us develop sports. So data, everything that they need, information in terms of how I can develop myself, you know, depending on what level I am, what age I am and all that. So, and we have a, a, a curriculum that helps develop every child depending on their, their development level. So we've spent um, a bit of time to ensure that we've, 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 we've made the development total so that everyone across all aspects can be developed. Olubenga Omojola, an executive coach, vision-driven entrepreneur, certified business management expert and industry captain, is the founder and chief executive officer of Black Scale Limited, a fast-growing, cutting-edge talent identification, incubation, acquisition, and verification firm in Nigeria. 
to be successful, what it takes to be successful in the business environment like Nigeria? Well, first and foremost, uh, I'd say it's the drive to succeed. Um, and I would imagine that would actually count for everywhere in the world, really. You must have the drive and passion to actually want to succeed at what you do. And quickly, I'd like to also add that you must have a passion to solve a notable or unidentified problem. Um, if, there's, if the passion is to solve a problem you've identified societally, um, and then there's a drive, you know, there's a will to ensure that is achieved. Uh, I think those are very primary and critical to succeeding in any business environment, including especially Nigeria, I'd say. I've been in the talent management space for quite a while now, um, way even before black skill and the concept of black skill evolved. Um, but then, just as you would know, the world is progressing significantly into a space where um, technology drives literally everything. You know, so talent management is also being driven by technology increasingly. As a matter of fact, I read recently a report um, from uh, Bill Gates, I think just a couple of days ago, where he mentioned that in the next three years, from projections and research that have been done, by the next three years, Africa would have fully onboarded and taken on artificial intelligence across all sectors. I mean, not 100%, but the growth and the acceptance would have been so, so great. Now, that tells us that literally every human endeavor will be driven by technology, if not even been driven yet. So we conceptualized black scale to drive the talent acquisition and visibility, you know, with technology, with a digital solution that meets the needs of you know, global talent market players. Primarily, we, we are looking to, and we will become the number one digital talent solutions platform in Sub-Saharan Africa, the go-to talent solutions um, provider in Sub-Saharan Africa. We're already on the way to achieving that. Um, Blackson is more or less already a a well-known name across sectors where we provide verified talents to organizations. But that's on one end. We also provide a platform where talent, and you know, by talent, I mean uh, individuals who have the required skills, knowledge, and attitude, the competencies to solve certain problems. So you have talents in accounting, you have talents in the medical space, you have talents in supply chain and so on. So you get my point. So what I'm saying is we've now provided the platform where these talents can sign up. Welcome to BlackSkill, your global access to verified talents. I came across BlackSkill online and I took a bold step to download the app. I signed up and I completed my profile, uploaded my CV and my certificate. And in no time, I was shortlisted for an interview. And right now, I am a product designer. So I will encourage you also to go online, to download the Black Skiller app on your mobile phone and sign up, complete your profile, upload your CV and upload your certificates. And in no time, I can assure you that you can be shortlisted. Daniel Aliyi, a young certified software engineer, astute entrepreneur, and emerging industry captain, is the founder and chief executive officer of IAF Sawi Limited, a fast growing ICT company in Nigeria, and indeed one of the most distinguished CEOs to look up to in 2024. IAF Sawi started with uh, about six uh, young guys 
that uh, had different experience. So we had various experience. One of the co-founders cool happened to have worked in a Chevron at some point. Then one of us also had happened to work in Access Bank. Then, then I was, I just left school not too long. I, I finished from the University of Lagos and I uh, had already started work, uh, programming things, building software. I'm actually a software engineer aside uh, doing managing. Uh, if I'm actually both the CEO and the head of engineering or you can say CTO. So over the years, I've built myself in that aspect, in, web, in software engineering and development. So we started about six of us and then we, we came together, we pulled our resources together, we rented a place where we were both living and working because we wanted to save costs. So what we did was, okay, why don't we, we're all young, 20 something, we're not married. So let's live and work. So we had about three, uh, two rooms with a parlor. So at, so at that time we were saving costs on rent. So we, we, we would stay there, we'd walk, we will pass the night, then we will wake up the next day, we kept on working. So that was how we started. So it was a bit rough, but the interesting thing is we're all passionate. We wanted to make a difference because in the edutech day, uh, there were little solutions out there. I mean, then what you would see majorly are paper-based solutions, things like paper pass question, textbooks. So the educational industry was not really making speedy progress at that time. So we wanted to pioneer or make some a difference in that space. So that was how we started. And ever since, we've been making a lot of headway and it has been great since then. The, the goal we had then was, how can we digitize learning? That was the foundation of our, uh, of whatever I wanted to do. So we said, how, we have several solutions out there, but most of them are not digital. So how can we digitize learning? So that was the first goal. The second goal is, how can we make learning fun? Because the, the usual way people learn is not fun, like you're just so boring and all of that. So the thought is, how can we create specialized software that would make a difference? So what we mean by that is, aside just learning and taking questions, can we also build things like math solvers, something that can, you can actually type your question and get instant solution. So the, go, the, the, the benefit of that is, you are going beyond just providing static information. You are now going beyond that by providing dynamic information, dynamic information, information that is they are created based on user's request. So if I ask a system, solve this problem, the solution is not being pulled from a database. The system is thinking about the problem and preferring solution. So building such a system would go a long way because a lot of students can actually, will be able to get solutions to their problem instantly without having to look for a teacher and all of that. So these are the three, these are the three goals we, we thought about. So first is digitize education. Second is to make sure that education, learning is fun. Then third is to provide specialized tools, or you can call them innovative tools that would make learning dynamic, not just static, pulling information from a database, like you are creating or synthesizing uh, responses. So these were the three goals we had. And regard the mission, our goal is to just, as I said earlier, but let me just present in a more formalized way, is to make learning fun, but in such a way that students will be able to pass their exams are very, very well. My name is Mune Kamsi Yachukun Kekinia. In this year, 2023, 139 students from Deeper Life High School Mole, which is my school, took the UTME and 46 of us came out with 300 and above out of 400 marks in total. I'm just honored to be the top scorer and I'm grateful to the test driller team for presenting me with this gift of 100,000 Naira. If you're a jam bite, this test driller app is for you. Oladi Meji Peters is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Force Central Credit Bureau Limited, the first licensed, truly independent, ISO certified credit intelligence firm in Nigeria, and indeed, one of the most distinguished CEOs to look up to in 2024. Uh, the financial sector is, um, let's say it's growing pretty much. 
yeah i i think it's it's a uh, it's an emotional one for me so i try not to dive into it too much but i think there's massive room for development uh, we may be doing the country a lot of the service if we don't extend our group a little bit further and i've been saying this not just to regulators but even to rest here to our people in the natural sector uh some of the things that we've been trying to see to either the financial sector would come up with or uh, embrace more uh, things we're now starting to see foreign country uh, foreign companies coming to the country with FDIs and they are now carrying out and executing with in some cases very consigning uh mechanisms and methods uh and i think it behoves for us to think even and say what can we do but on the on the on the average i think we're doing fairly well but again there's also room for development uh, uh luckily enough i was speaking to the other two just yesterday or the day before yeah. and they we are also resting our hands to um, the prospect of people coming on board the financial sector not only appreciating what we do but also seeing the value and the sense of it uh, indeed in some cases people don't subscribe to the service until you know it's extreme and uh, we've always believed in you know be proactive it's not when the person has gone away with your money that you want to come to the system and say, where does he live? What's his address? Where does it work? The system will give you all of that. But if you have proactively checked that before, then, then you can actually say, okay, this man has a tendency of moving from one address to the other. He's not consistent. And not only on his address, but also on his loan. There are lots of information you can actually see in a credit report system. And it's, it's a beautiful thing to see. Well, I'm going to be honest with you, we've spent a lot of, um, a lot of um, um, resource and energy trying to you know, get the market to up to speed. Uh, we've seen some good traction, but um, there, again, there's always room for improvement. Uh, we've seen cases where we tell people about credit bureau and they ask you how much is a dollar to a pound, how much is a dollar to because they think the credit bureau is a bit of change. Uh, so for that purpose, we try to sensitize people a little bit more. It's been going well. When people are more informed than me, either within the financial system or they are more financially literate, they are able to adapt. But then, to the common or to the average, apologies, the average person, it's uh, a bit difficult to. And so, we do a lot of sensitization. You know, we are everywhere. You would have seen some podcasts on Tom Milan Bridge, you see First Century on the stage, you see First Century on TV, you see First Century. Trying to tell people what we do, what we are about, and the importance of that for us as a country. And then um, it is important that we retreat the states because you see, if there are 200 countries in the world, at least 160, 170, 180 of them subscribe to the idea of a credit bureau system. They understand how it is, you know, uh, important for economic development. And now it's it's not something that it is existential. It's not negotiated. And as a country, if we understand. Uh, how systems are integrated and how you know asymmetry in one sector can affect the other sector, we will start to take things a little bit more. This is for Central Credit Bureau Limited. Welcome to our world. Central Credit Bureau. Call us now. Shola Adigun, an experienced automobile manager, corporate strategist, goal getting entrepreneurial expert, and industry captain, is the managing director of Kaloha Nigeria Limited, one of the fastest growing automobile marketing firms in Nigeria and indeed one of the most distinguished CEOs to look up to in 2024. A lot of people, that's a question I would love to answer. A lot of people have been always who want to know Kaloa. Uh, Kaloa started in the United States of America, started as an uh, online and offline. We have specialized in selling premium used cars. And we have network in the United States of America. We had 200 staff at that time. Well, it was established in 2014. But Kaluat wanted to go to international. 
the first port to think of after doing a lot of global research was Africa. Now, Africa, which country should we come to Africa? It was narrowed down to Nigeria because of a lot of factors, because of our population, the growth in the middle class, and believing in the Nigeria economy. Kalua was now uh, incorporated in uh, 2019, but we started operation in 2000 because of COVID, after the COVID. Uh, towards the end of 2000, we started operation. We bring in premium use cars. That uh, before any car is being pushed to the market or to a showroom, we do 145 checks and that take power for our quality control. And uh, to September 2022, we moved to the Central Modern Showroom. We have one of the best showrooms in Nigeria. If you walk through our showroom, those cars there, they are premium use cars. You can never believe they are, they are being refurbished. We want Nigerians to be able to drive luxury, affordable use cars with durability. Uh, we have employed a lot of Nigerians that are working with, with us. Uh, so we have created employment. And we go to the future, we have future plans. Now, the next 10 years, we want to be the global leader in Africa as much as possible because Kaloa believes more in Africa. The vision is to drive the world with latest technological advancement in automobile engineering and customer care delivery that simplify the car buying process for consumers. While our mission is offering user-friendly online platform where customers can browse, compare, and purchase vehicle conveniently. Yes, of course, we've actually done so much in the United States, and we want to repeat the same in Nigeria. We have got, we have a very interactive website, and again, we have partnership with other independent websites that are automobile uh, sellers. We have partnership with them. I had a little earlier than most you might have known. One, we are now an assembler. In Nigeria, we have an automotive, national automotive assembly license to assemble cherry vehicle. We have our own African brand, we will call Luha. We want to make it full African, everything possible. We don't want to depend on any OEM. We want to be our OEM. That's why we have our Luha brand. We are having a pickup at LMC and we're having agricultural tractor, Oyokan, and electric vehicle, electric uh, bikes. Why um, we move to the next segment, which is the sales. We're involved in sales of both new and used cars, premium used cars, not just like premium used cars, satisfied premium used cars. Uh, we're involved in that, and we also offer services. We are the only company in Nigeria that offers warranty on used cars. We give you a uh, three-month warranty of 5,000 kilometers, whichever comes first. Other used car sellers in that segment, mainly you drive out of their dealership or out of their showroom, your, your car lower is a different thing. Within three months, bring your car back, we'll be responsible. So far, it's not area of insurance like accident or other things. Since we are on, this, on the premium used car segment, which is more of the middle and upper middle class. A lot of people who are probably patronizing us. People see uh, our name somewhere, perhaps at, at one of our athletes, one of our uh, partners, they will come to the showroom. But they are sure one, they are buying car with good titles, good uh, uh, custom paper, make sure we pay the appropriate, and they are sure of the quality of the cars. And this has helped us to be able to penetrate more into the Nigeria market. Thank you. On the new car, we're looking at mobility. We want to produce an affordable vehicle for Africa. That for the new car segment, we are just entering. Affordable vehicle for Africa. We want to make sure that Africa no longer depends on used cars. They depend on new cars. The used car that we want to Kaloa wants to be available, for example, in Nigeria, it's Nigeria used car. If you are buying a new car for some years, you want to upgrade, then you sell. But not bringing jobs from all over the world to sell in Nigeria or in Africa. That's what we really want our customer. While on the premium segments, we want to give luxury, affordable, 
um, excellent customer service or excellent after sales on the used car segment. If you look uh, all over the world, used car business is bigger than new car business. Even in the United States of America, used car business is like if there's a company in the United States called um, that's involved in selling used cars. Those are the highest sellers. The others that are selling new cars, they, are, they don't have that figure. Comparing to Nigeria, the used car business in Nigeria is about 1 million cars each year, import 400,000. While uh, Nigeria used car being sold is about 600,000. But uh, anywhere in the world, used car business is a big business that is not known to a lot of people that are not in the industry. For a used car, as Ella mentioned, they are for middle and upper class. But for the new car coming in, it will be affordable. We are looking at something that uh, the minimum used car, common used car, I don't want to mention brands in this place. Uh, the, some used car coming in that are being used maybe for mobility, let's say taxi, the budget uh, is maybe let's say now it's about six, seven million. When we are looking, we are introducing new car that's about 30% higher than that. If you can have a car that is 30% higher than a used car that is almost 10, 15 years with six years warranty or 200,000 kilometers at 30% higher than the cost of used cars. So those are the people that look out for us and we are also looking out for them. I bring a value, you bring a value. That's what we need to do. So the era of competition. But we thank God for our stakeholders, our, our partners, our bankers and... Uh... Well, well, and this is what we bring down the curtains on today's package of the EOM Business Network. Thank you very much for spending your value time with us. We hope it was worth your while. But just in case you missed out on any aspect of it, then you can come with us to any of our other social portals or feedback that you can see on the screen. Sincere gratitude to you, our sponsors, for your continued interest and support. Always remember, with you and us, we are charms. Oh yes, I remain Olorogo Elkana Moari. Please, let's do this again, same time, same channel next week. We'll trust you join us.